Trump campaign began on July 31st, 2016. You uh, drafted the originating document. You approved the originating document. You were the point of contact on the originating document. And the FBI has represented to Congress that nothing from an investigative standpoint with respect to Russian collusion and the Trump campaign began before July 31st, 2016. But 10 days before the investigation even began, 10 days before you drafted the originating document, approved the originating document, was the point of contact on the originating document, 10 days before the investigation began, which the department you work for says nothing was done before July 31st. You said Trump is a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. And because you struggled a couple of weeks ago with a word that I thought had a commonly accepted definition, I'm going to go ahead and give you the definition of destabilizing. The first one kind of is obvious. It's to make unstable. The second one caught my attention, the second dictionary definition. To cause something such as a government to be incapable of functioning or surviving. That's a pretty significant allegation to make 10 days before you even began to investigate someone. So that was before July 31st. I want to ask you in that first week, we'll go ahead and up it to eight days. Between July 31st and August 8th, how many interviews did you conduct related to the alleged collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign? So, Congressman, as you know, counsel for the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, has instructed me not to answer questions about the ongoing investigation. I'm asking for a number. Russian attempts to Agent, interfere. Agent Strzok, I'm asking for a number. I haven't gotten to the names. How many people had you, had you interviewed between the beginning of it on July 31st and August the 8th? It's an eight-day time period. We're a week into an investigation. How many people had you interviewed? Congressman, I understand your question. I appreciate it, and I would very much like to answer. But as I've stated, as you know that counsel of the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, have directed me not to answer any <coughs> questions about the ongoing investigation into Russian attempts to interfere. So, so you so the, the, gentleman, the gentleman will election. suspend, and the clock will suspend. Mr. Strzok, you are under subpoena and are required to answer the question. Are you objecting to the question? If so, please Mr. state your objection. Mr. Chairman, I object. The, the gentleman it does not have standing Mr. to Chair object. I, there is no point, point of order. No point of order well, here. The, the, the point of order it should be heard. What's the, what's the, the gentleman will state his point of order. My point of order is that intentionally or otherwise, this demand puts Mr. Strzok in an impossible position. He is still an employee of the FBI, and FBI counsel has instructed him not to answer the question. The gentleman's if we have a problem with this policy, we should take it up with the FBI, not badger Mr. Strzok. The but gentleman's should... point of order is not well taken. It's right the... on point. No, it's not. The... Mr. Strzok, are you objecting to the question? And if so, please state your objection. Mr. Chairman, two things. One, I do not believe I am here under subpoena. I believe I am here voluntarily. Second... I will not, based on direction of the FBI to me, based on that, I will not answer that question because it goes to matters which are related to the ongoing investigations being undertaken by the special Mr. counsel Strzok, office. Mr. Strzok, you have not stated a l valid legal basis for not responding to a question directed to you by a member of the United States House of Representatives, and you are overruled. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Your, uh, let, me, let me continue. Your testimony is essential to this hearing and to our oversight and information gathering functions with regard to the actions taken mm. and decisions made by the Department of Justice and the Federal Bureau of Investigation in 2016 and 2017. I am specifically directing you to answer the question in response to our subpoena, notwithstanding your objection. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Strzok, please be advised that you can either comply with the committee's directive to answer the question or refuse to do so 
the latter of which will place you at risk of a contempt citation and potential criminal liability. Point of do, do order. Do you understand that? Point of order, Mr. The, Chairman. The question is directed to the witness. And I have a point of order before he answers the question. The, the, the point of order is not well taken until... You don't know what the point of order is. You can't say it's not well the, taken. The point of order, the, the, the witness will answer the question. Mr. Chairman, I, have, I raise my point of order and I insist on it. What is the point of order? The United States Attorney's Manual instructs department personnel not to respond to questions about the existence of an ongoing investigation or comment on its nature or progress. In a letter to Congressman John Linder in 2000, referred to as the Linder letter, the department made this policy explicitly applicable to requests from Congress. Quote, although Congress has a clearly legitimate interest in determining how the department enforces statutes, congressional in 